Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CityStreetsMe.com. We are here in the beautiful city of Wichita, Kansas on a Tuesday evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. I am here with Mr. Michael O'Donnell, Kansas Senator. Mr. O'Donnell, thank you for taking the time to sit down with us. Absolutely. I'm flattered by the invitation. Absolutely. Um, I don't know who wouldn't possibly know you in the city of Wichita, Kansas, but if they don't know you, uh, let the people know who you are. Well, uh, like Lawrence said, I'm a state senator here in Kansas in the 25th Senate District, which is central Wichita, um, west central Wichita, and goes a little bit south. Um, prior to being elected to the state Senate in November of 2012, I had been on the Wichita City Council for a couple years before uh, that, representing southwest Wichita. And it's been a you know, complete honor to be able to serve the people that I uh, live by and the people of Wichita my father's been a pastor here in Wichita since the early 80s, which got my drive for public service and getting out in the community. Um, that, that's where the real affinity for that came from. And uh, I look forward just to the opportunity of serving out the rest of this term, which will, I'm not up for re-election until 2016, so I've got a little bit of time to accomplish some of my main goals for the city and the state of Kansas. That is awesome. Now, you're, you're a young man. Uh, tell me, where, where does the life of politics, where did all that involve? Where did that drive to get you here? Well, uh, like I mentioned, my dad, uh, being a minister, always being out in the community. My mom is a school teacher and is vice principal at a Christian school here in town. So we've always been um, cognizant of the fact that we need to give back right. to the community. And politics, just like being a teacher, just like being a fireman or a preacher, you, you have that opportunity to serve other people. Right. Um, I think too often in politics, uh, politicians expect to be served. Right. You know, I tell everybody that being a, being a politician is the most um, uh, over, overly praised job right. in politics, overrated, um, because I think there comes a point where people believe that if you're a politician that you are powerful and that you are great and that people put their faith in you because you're spectacular. Right. When I think it needs to be the other way around. We work for the people. Right. Um, and that's the main trouble, I believe, with Washington, D.C., which has in, you know, infected uh, local governments, state governments, because of the perception that your elected officials don't listen to you. Right. And it's not an honorable position anymore like it used to be where you had a lot of statesmen. Right. Um, so what I'm trying to do is change that perception and let people know that I am going to listen to you. I'm going to um, fight for um, everyone, not just the people with money or influence, but everybody that I serve in my district, the people that voted for me and the people that didn't vote for me, that, that I answer to them. I'm their employee. Right. Let, let me ask you this on, on that note, and, and this, is, this is something that I'm, I'm very intrigued in. How important is it to you to build uh, bipartisan relationships and, and to actually be able to work with uh, individuals on both sides of the aisle? How important is that to you? I, I think that that is honestly my number one goal in the legislature is to build relationships with other key leaders right. because together we can pass things and, and get good legislation. My, my key achievement in this past legislative session as a freshman was this um, bill that would allow people whose homes were destroyed by a tornado to get tax abatements um, based on the April 2012 tornado down in South Wichita um, in the Oakland area. We were able to get that through um, because it was bipartisan support. I had Senator Aletha Fauscado, the only Democrat in Sedgwick County uh, Senate delegation, sign on it with me from, from square one. So we had that. Um, as a good benchmark to show that you can get stuff done. And up in Topeka, because there are super majorities of Republicans in both the House and the Senate and a Republican governor, you don't have to be um, bipartisan. Right. But I think you should be. I think it's better government because it was our government was intended to have checks and balances. Right. And and I, I believe that the discourse is good for debate and, and it's good for uh, policy to have people from different aisles, you know, working together constructively. Right. So, so to me, that's imperative. Currently, right now, I'm working with former District Attorney Nola Fulston on some legislation for the 2014 legislative session, who is a key um, Democrat, probably the most well-known Democrat in our area, that um, shows that I do want to work with people of the other. 
other aisle, uh, other side of the aisle, right. and get some stuff done. So, so it's it's imperative to me. I like that. I like that. But let me ask you this: when when you talk about walking working both sides of the aisle, um, a lot of the or some of the things that I hear about Wichita, which we're talking about, we're talking about growth, uh, economic diversification. Uh, where do you see Wichita, even the state as a whole, where do you see the, in the next five to ten years? I, I actually am very optimistic about the state as a whole right now and the trajectory that we're on. We're trying to become a business friendly state. Prior to um, Governor Brownback taking office, Kansas, you know, we were just right in the middle when it comes to taxes, when it comes to state spending, a lot of different areas. What Governor Brownback's tried to do, and it's been controversial, is to cut taxes on businesses so that they, well, individuals as well, but, but to really go aggressively on taxes on businesses so they know they can stay in Kansas and make money. Right. It, wasn't, it wasn't the only decision, but it was a factor in the decision for Boeing to leave Kansas after 85 years right. because of the tax structure. The tax structure in uh, Texas and the tax structure in Washington State has more incentives for businesses. They don't have state income tax in either of those states. Right. So the board of directors of Boeing is able to look at the states and say, where can we make money? Because that's their goal. They were sitting in Chicago. They didn't have that attachment to Wichita. So it, I think that, that woke a lot of people up, that if there was any company that embodied Wichita, it was Boeing. You know, at one time the largest employer in the state, right? Leaving, so we needed to do something, be more aggressive. Wichita is lagging the rest of the state, which is very unfortunate. But it's because we've been so dependent on aviation sector. Right. Western Kansas has been dependent on farming, and that really hasn't had any sort of downturn because people are going to eat no matter what. Right. So Western Kansas then well, um, and Johnson County, Northeast Kansas, Kansas City metro area. They're doing very well. In fact, Johnson County has more jobs today than they did prior to the recession in 2008. Right. So they're actually doing better. It's Wichita that's lagging. It's unfortunate, but it's because we've been so dependent on a few very large companies that were in the aviation field. The city council, when I was on it, we, we tried to make an initiative to go after new types of business, go after the medical industry, go after more of the service industry, uh, go after um, other types of manufacturing. Right. And we've been, we've been somewhat successful um, with diversifying ourselves, but it takes time. I mean, we were built up as an aviation community for you know, 90 years. Right. So now, in the last five to 10 years is when people really started to wake up and think these jobs might not be here in the next 20, 30 years, what are we gonna do? Right. But we have such a good, strong coalition of small businesses in Wichita um, that are manufacturer-based that serve not just aviation, but serve other types of industry as well, whether that's the auto industry um, uh, and other types of um, components. Right. And then, of course, um, we be in the world headquarters for Coke Industries is a huge economic uh, boost for us. Right. They're, they're building a new campus, hiring 750 new people at that new campus they're building, the, the new addition on our campus, I should say. And they said they already want to start talking about the next building they're going to build. So, so we're lucky to have them. We're lucky to have Cargill and their hundreds of employees. And then, of course, uh, we are still an aviation-run town. So right. our aviation companies, we need to make sure that they're uh, able to make money and able to have um, a strong community support and an educated and talented workforce Absolutely. and that's what we have more than um, any of these other cities that they look at it's it's what our workforce can do especially when it comes to our engineers um, we're the world headquarter for Airbus engineers right so there's there's a lot of factors that just if we don't even have the manufacturing jobs let's keep the other types of jobs like the engineering so so we we're working with WSU, with National Center for Aviation Training, with um, NIAR, all these um, learning um, institutions, whether it's a four-year college or a vocational school, right. to make sure we have that um, talented workforce.